Hello everybody, let's talk a little bit about electrothermal gun designs. So the most basic uh, design is the uh, following. We have a conducting barrel, like uh, for example copper tube, uh, and uh, another electrode inside it, uh, inserted, and a combustible material between those two electrodes. So the, when the capacitor discharges, when, when the switch is short circuited, the capacitor discharges uh, through the combustion material, heating it up uh, and making it burn. And uh, the gases uh, generated by this burn is expanded to propel the projectile upwards. Uh, so the energy of a capacitor in a basic electrothermal thermal gun is used just to uh, heat up the combustion material up to the burning temperature and the uh, major work on a projectile is made by gases generated by the combustion of uh, this uh, material. So the uh, drawback of this design is that uh, uh, every time uh, the combustion material burns, uh, the barrel needs to be cleaned up uh, and actually electrodes are damaged also, getting covered by some crap uh, and then burned stuff. Uh, another design uh, is uh, air operating electrothermal gun, which is the following. We have non-conductive barrel and uh, two electrodes inside it in the combustion chamber, one electrode and another one. For example, is a ring inside the barrel. So when the capacitor discharged, uh, the um, electrical current between those electrodes heating up air uh, up to the plasma state, heating up, expanded, and uh, the expansion of this uh, heated air propels a projectile. In this case, all the energy of a capacitor is used uh, to um, heat up the air and uh, propel the projectile uh, without any help of a combustion material. The drawback of this design is that uh, to penetrate the air between electrodes the high voltage required, really high voltage. In order to overcome it we add the transformer in series with the capacitor and the electrodes uh, with the secondary connected in series with electrodes and the primary is discharged uh, with a little cap and the trigger so the voltage temporarily uplifted to the level high enough to ionize the air between electrodes and uh, in, uh, which initiates the discharge between electrodes when uh, ions uh, appear between the electrodes and the discharge chamber, the current starts to flow, uh, the plasma is uh, generated, heated up, uh, and uh, uh, to further heat up the plasma to, um, to make the current flow, the, there is no more high voltage required, so even a couple hundred volts is just enough to, to make the current flow through those electrodes. The drawback of this design is that the uh, bigger the distance between electrodes, the higher the voltage required to ionize the air. Uh, the higher voltage means uh, more turns in secondary, which is an inductance in series with a capacitor. This inductance is a parasitic inductance and it limits the current, which the maximum current which can flow between electrodes. There is also a resistance in series with a discharge uh, um, chain. And the goal of uh, my design, which I'll show you in a second, will be uh, removing of uh, any parasitic inductances and resistances uh, in a chain between the main discharge capacitor and the electrodes. So the efficiency of the discharge will be higher, but still the distance can be big enough. So the design is the following. So this is an um, improvement of the previous design. Um, here we also have again those two electrodes in the far corners of a discharge chamber. And the barrel is non-conductive again. Actually, all the setup is the same, except there is no transformer between uh, the discharge capacitor and the electrodes. So we still need to uh, somehow get ions inside the discharge chamber, which will initiate the discharge between the main electrodes. In order to uh, generate those ions, we add another electrode. So here is the common ground electrodes, this one ring, and inside it added another electrode, 
and this one again has a transformer which uplifts the voltage of a supplemental cap to some level just enough to penetrate this couple millimeters of air between those electrodes so one electrode triggering electrode is inserted inside the uh, main electrode of uh, main discharge chain when we trigger um, the transformer the voltage of supplemental cap temporarily uplifted to the level high enough to uh, penetrate this couple millimeters of air between the electrodes and the ions generated by this discharge which uh, happen to be here um, when the discharge is over is used to conduct the current between the main electrodes so the same ions are generated by a triggering um, uh, the triggering spark is used for the main discharge this way by this discharge we have ions inside the discharge chamber once the ions uh, get in inside here the current uh, quickly rises and we have all this chamber full with uh, plasma which is expanded uh, using the energy from a main cap and propels a projectile upwards in a second I'll show you how this design actually works in practice here this ring electrodes is a common ground this electrode is uh, plus 780 volts and belongs to this capacitor and the third electrode is actually inserted inside the ring electrodes so the distance between the tip of uh, this electrodes and the ring is really small like a couple millimeters only uh, this is just uh, triggering, triggering electrodes it is uh, connected to this cap the different one through the transformer uh, which is uh, used to uplift the voltage temporarily so to start the spark discharge between those two electrodes uh, after the air ionized uh, the discharge happens between those two little electrodes and the uh, ions uh, produced by that discharge uh, involved in the discharge of between those two main electrodes which are connected directly to that capacitor so, the setup is the following. I have a lithium battery converter which uh, um, generates 180 volts and uh, two uh, diodes uh, for each of this capacitor. Um, charge both of them to 780 volts. The third capacitor is connected through the resistor to this uh, big capacitor and this one used only to um, generate uh, starting, triggering discharge. Uh, to generate high voltage on this transformer which is connected in series with this capacitor so we have capacitor uh, the secondary of a transformer this electrode and the common ground electrode so, so this is the first uh, discharge system the second discharge system is just those two main electrodes without anything between capacitor and electrodes just the shortest wire possible so to get the highest current possible and the distance between those electrodes is high enough to involve uh, pretty much air in the discharge to heat it up to plasma state and the little discharge between those two uh, triggering electrodes will initiate uh, the discharge between the main electrodes and this voltage meter is connected to the second capacitor, to the main capacitor. Most of the uh, charge of this capacitor will be shortly discharged. So, I'll start my charger. Here we quickly have 780 volts. There's uh, 60 microfarads capacitor, those big ones, so each one contains around uh, 17 joules of energy. 17 joules for triggering and 17 joules for the main discharge normally of course the uh, main discharge capacitor will have much higher capacitance uh, uh, but uh, it's just demonstration purposes so I don't really care so we have 780 volts let's disconnect the charger the voltage stays there so I connect uh, the primary of a transformer to generate the initial discharge between those two electrodes Let's make it happen. Ooh, that was loud. So we have 13 volts left in the main discharge capacitor. That means uh, that discharge actually happened between those two big electrodes. So actually success. 
let's make a couple more shots to demonstrate that this is a reliable technology. It's not just a lucky case that it, uh, the, this part happened. So here we go. One, two, and let's make a third shot. Disconnecting the charger so to see the voltage left. There we go. Zero volts left. So as you can see, uh, the distance between those two electrodes maybe might be even bigger. Uh, it was just uh, set up from top of my head. Maybe the distance might be really big. So to have a big chamber with two electrodes in the end of it used to make a big boom and uh, project that projectile with a really high pressure, with a big amount of plasma. So if you like this, you can just copy the technology and try to make an electrothermal gun operating on air only without any aluminum foil. Maybe this will be a perspective technology from now on. Thanks for watching.